Hey there, Bible Buddies. I do not have another Bible review for you today. Instead, I have something a little bit different. What I have is a classic and much-beloved novel by John Bunyan. Uh, many of you might know this particular novel. It is... Do, 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 the Pilgrim's Progress. Um, so, I wanted to do a quick review of this one, uh, only because it's one that I picked up on eBay not too long ago. Uh, and this specific edition is a... It's kind of a special edition that was done by Easton Press uh, a while back ago. Uh, and I purchased this one online... I found it for kind of a steal of a deal, uh, and I had been interested in reading it for a while, uh, and I kind of wanted something neat to kind of, like, read to my son, I guess, because I had heard a lot of good things about the story. Um, so we're kind of in the middle of uh, reading it now, and I just wanted to go ahead and do a review to show you guys uh, this edition of The Pilgrim's Progress. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Uh, on the outside, you can see it's a very, very nice and ornate and very intricate cover design they did there. A lovely gilt pattern. Uh, now this, from what I read online, is a uh, it's a leather over board, um, so it is a hardback, um, and this is uh, I would imagine probably a, kind of a low quality leather. It doesn't even feel like leather; almost feels like a synthetic. Uh, but online they call it a leather, so I'm going to assume it's a leather. Uh, as far as the spine goes, you have some more of those intricate designs, and you have the Pilgrim's Progress, and you have by John Bunyan there on the bottom, and then a the little Eastern Press logo on the back. It's that same intricate design pattern. Very neat. It's very, um, you know, it gives it like a certain feel. I love when classic, uh, you know, novels have this sort of look, kind of like a classic book. Uh, it just really elevates it. I mean, I'm pretty sure you probably get this in like a paperback, um, you know, or something kind of similar to that. But there's just something to be said about having like a nice uh, edition of uh, kind of a much beloved story like this. It's super cool. Uh, as far as the other accents go on the exterior, uh, we do have a kind of a green and yellow head and tail band there. Uh, there is one ribbon. We'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, there's a very nice uh, gilt there. And it's just the gold. I don't believe it's art gilt. But a very nicely done job. And then on the bottom, you can see this gargantuan ribbon. It is very thick. <laughs> I measured it and it, I measured it and it is five eighths of an inch thick. Uh, so it's quite a quite a quite a thick one there. And it is a double-sided satin and it's kind of a gold color. Uh, which is nice, you know, goes with the theme. So but a, a very wide ribbon nonetheless. Uh, so let's go ahead and get it open. We'll take a look. On the inside, you can see this wonderful, now, uh, this wonderful kind of fabric uh, paper. This is called a silk moire paper. Uh, and moire, I think, is spelled like M-O-I-R-E, if I remember correctly. But it's this very nice um, paper. They, they usually call it like a moire paper. Uh, but it has this really cool effect. You can see where it catches the light, and it looks almost like shimmery. Um, but it's a very nice kind of salmon color, and it does have a very, uh, you know, kind of tactile texture to it. It's a very neat paper. I love this for vintage editions. It's a very nice paper to use. Uh, and then you can see <laughs> the corner work that I always show you guys. Just kind of fold it over there. Nothing nothing special, nothing to write home about. But uh, nonetheless, I do show it to you guys, so I will continue <laughs> continue doing that. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. I'm not going to obviously flip through the whole thing, but I'll show you, I guess, the, kind of the beginning and the end like I do with the Bibles. Uh, and you do have the end sheet here, and then it just gets right into it. The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, illustrated by William Blake. And then you have a little photo there of John Bunyan, what he looked like. And you have the title page. I'll let you take a look. Got some of that information there. The Easton Press. And then this was, I guess, a specific edition they did. It says, The 100 Greatest Books Ever Written, Collector's Edition, Bound in Genuine Leather. Um, and then it says, Illustrated with Watercolors by William Blake. Um, so yeah, I guess, Bound in Genuine Leather. Um, and I'm assuming they did some other editions there. And I, I think if I remember correctly, because I, I saw a few of them pop up at once, there's like kind of the, um, you know, kind of the standards, you know, Lord of the Rings and that sort of thing that they did. Um, some of the classics, again, the 100 greatest books ever written. <laughs> On the back side, you have some information here about the print, which is always nice. I'll leave it there for a split second. If you guys want to pause, you can read it. But it gives some information about um, kind of the novel and the, uh, the various editions that came out. And you have the, publish the publisher's preface. And this goes on for a few pages. And then after that, we have uh, a list of the plates. So this one does have some illustrations. There's not very many. Uh, and the majority of them are kind of closer towards the beginning. Uh, but there are a few, a few, and I will let you take a look at them here. And we start. And then you have your table of contents. And then how this book came to be. Here's a little bit more additional information. And then after that, we have the secondary title page there, The Pilgrim's Progress. And then the author's apology for his book. I love that. 
Now, if you guys haven't re uh, read this before, I think that there's an updated version with like more modern English. Uh, but this is, I don't know, I wouldn't call this like, I guess, I guess it, it would be kind of considered like old English. Um, but it's very flowery and very um, verbose, all of the uh, kind of the wording of it. Uh, the way that it's written, it tends to kind of like go back and describe the thing that just happened. And, and it goes back and re-describes the thing that just happened. Uh, but it, it does so in like a very, uh, just the, the language used is very uh, old school. So <laughs> as I'm reading through this with my son, my son is uh, very young. He's, he hasn't hit double digits yet. Um, so there's many times when I have to kind of like stop and kind of, uh, put into modern terms what it is that that sentence means uh, because he's like, well, Dad, you know, what does that mean, Daddy? <laughs> so I kind of kind of pause and go back to it because it uh, it is a uh, kind of the oldy Englishy, you know. Uh, and then here's the beginning of Pilgrim's Progress and the similitude of a dream. And we'll turn a few pages and try and find some of those plates. Here we go. John Bunyan dreams a dream. So there's John Bunyan falling asleep next to a lion. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Pilgrim's Progress, uh, it's essentially like the story of like a like a Christian's a Christian's journey kind of through Christianity. It's funny because I say a Christian, and the main character's name is Christian, which you can see there. Christian reading his book. So uh, here, you know, he calls it you know his book, and it's the Bible essentially. Um, but it's kind of his journey as a Christian, and it kind of uh, you know talks about a lot of the struggles that uh, you know we Christians go through, like whether it's uh, you know, persecution or whether it's uh, kind of depression uh, or kind of the, the burdens that we feel uh, for like our past sins and guilt and that kind of thing. Uh, it kind of covers a lot of those topics. So it's a really neat thing, uh, the way that it works and how it's kind of phrased and written and all that stuff. So it's super cool. I mean, I, I love it so far. It's been a good read. We are exactly uh, that far in it, <laughs> right where the ribbon marker is. Uh, so I haven't quite finished it all the way, but um, it's just, it's really a super story. I love it. It's been really great. I'll show you one last one, and then we'll kind of go towards the end there. We have Christian in the Slough of Despond. Um, and kind of similar to the Bible, um, you know, if you guys have ever kind of looked into what the uh, kind of the names of the people in the Bible mean, uh, it usually correlates pretty closely with what happens to them. And it's the same way here um, in uh, Pilgrim's Progress. Their names, uh, the names of, you know, cities and characters tend to correlate closely with uh, kind of their character traits, which is neat. So, uh, it's pretty much just that. I mean, obviously it's a, a single column paragraph <laughs> and there are some designators every once in a while for, uh, you know, for who's speaking faith or Christian uh, and that sort of thing. But sometimes it just says, you know, Christian said and then faith said and that sort of thing. Uh, so it does kind of mix it up a little bit here and there, but, uh, at the end you have the conclusion and it's just a single page there and it gets to the end of the book. There's a few pages, I guess, if you wanted to take some notes or just, uh, you know, or what, what have you, I guess they're just finishing off the signature. Uh, it's blank there, and you have your end sheet again. And that's it. I mean, really a super stellar edition of The Pilgrim's Progress. Um, I don't know that if Easton Press still makes this. Uh, I, I kind of don't think they do. I could be wrong on that. I'll go ahead and I'll look around and see if I can find um, a link to it. If they sell it, I'll put it down below if there is a link. Uh, if not, I guess eBay would be your best bet. And I think I remember I looked it up on, on eBay and there were like a couple editions here and there of people selling it. Um, so they are kind of available if you're interested. Let's get some measurements for you right quick. And it comes in at nine and a half inches tall by about six and a quarter inches wide and about an inch an inch and a quarter thick. I'll take a look at the fonts. And the uppercase, it's a nice large font. The uppercase seems to be about a 13 point font. Yeah, we'll go with 13 for the uppercase. And for the lowercase, we'll do the M and him. Yeah, about a 13 point font uh, in comparison to Times New Roman. So a 13 point font, a nice, uh, very legible uh, font size, uh, very nice, uh, you know, kind of orders on the page. You have nice letting. Uh, so very easy edition to read, uh, albeit you're, you're going to be probably contending with the old English, um, you know, <laughs> depending on your, I guess, how much you use the King James version. <laughs> Maybe you won't struggle so much with it. Uh, but yeah, definitely an interesting edition. Uh, so, uh, Bible Buddies, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, feel free to leave them down below. 
Otherwise, if you could please like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Uh, until next time, Bible buddies. Bye.